Hey, everybody. How's it going? Dan Schinder here with... Lou Calderola. He's in on the East Coast. I'm almost on the West Coast. I'm in Arizona. Uh, Lou's in New York. And we are we are under the influence pretty much. I might as well be. I, I got a headache actually recording my two... Uh, clips this morning <laughs> we'll get into that but this is under the influence if you're not familiar with what we do lou and i share different themes every month of different drumming things that have been part of the musical influence of our lives as drummers and musicians and lou came up with this theme which is basically drum breaks not just fills but my, one of mine happens to be an intro we did intros last month but it's more of like a drum feature i guess we could say right lou yeah, yeah. Things that really where it brings the drums, you know, up front as almost like the lead instrument of the part. Yeah, absolutely. And and folks, chime in and tell us where you're watching from. I have the show up on a monitor here so we can give shout outs, answer questions if there's any questions. And go ahead and tell us what some of your favorite drum features or drum breaks are in songs. They could be a solo or not a solo that's during a song. Moby Dick kind of doesn't count because that's more of a that's a solo. You know what I mean? Um, Max Roach's The Drum Also Waltzes doesn't really... We're looking for just short little features or segments uh, within songs. So Lou and I each did two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just scroll down so I can see the show. Let us know where you're watching from. And um, this episode, as this entire series, is brought to you by the Metaflex Therapy Glove. These are great for older guys like me who have arthritis. And my arthritis kicked in for the first time in a while since I've been using these. They're so comfortable. They're compression gloves that you could change the tension on. They're great not just for drummers, but anyone that works with their hands or guitar players or whatever. You could change the, the tension. These things are great. But for the first time in a long time since I've been wearing these, my arthritis kicked up a little bit yesterday because Sunday... It was 70 degrees here and it snowed last night. So last night it got real cold. I'm like, what's going on with my hands? And my wife said, well, the temperature dropped like 50 degrees overnight almost, you know, in two days anyways. So crazy, but check these out. There's a link in the post as is for our email list. And I have a special announcement about that going on. But Lou, talk about your first piece. And we're gonna feature Lou who gets such a great sound in his studio playing on such a cool, RCI Thank kit. You. Yeah, absolutely. Tell, tell us what you got. So uh, this is kind of one of the ones going back to, I figured with the theme that we were doing with like, you know, the Drake, the breaks and the drums being featured. Um, one of the first couple albums that I could remember playing to as a kid and really wanting to learn like, oh man, those drums sound so cool. I got to learn was a lot of Black Sabbath stuff, a lot of Bill Ward stuff. And um, so I, Picked a Bill Ward for this one. Um, Symptom of the Universe. I mean, there's so many great Black Sabbath songs yeah. that feature some of his drumming. But it was neat because for like what some folks will say, you know, the first heavy metal band or at least someone that kind of pushed everything in into that direction for sure. Yeah. Um, Bill had a pretty jazzy style, really. Early. Yeah, he was you know, a like jazz a drummer. His, yeah. And he really... To, to you know the way he applied his playing to some of the you know to some of the parts it came up with such such iconic riffs so i thought symptom of the universe it did a little segment of that where um you know on either side of all the verses he's just they just like let it's like yeah yeah this is for you bill go ahead yeah. go for it he's basically <laughs> soloing over it kind of akin to another great rock drummer who's really a jazz drummer ian pace in the song burn yeah it's similar yeah, to that right. it's kind of that that vibe uh but yeah folks check this out chime in if you're watching us live or on the archive let us know what some of your favorite drum breaks are drum features in songs let us know where you're watching from here is lou with the really cool rendition of what he's talking about bill ward's feature in symptom of the universe turn it up check this out
I just love it, man. You nailed it too. Is that something that has stuck as part of your soundtrack of your life repertoire of what you like to play, or did you just pull that of out of the trunk? Oh, uh, that uh, uh, that one's one that, that uh, for a long time that was a song that I used to play. That one, um, War Pigs. I used, you know, those are my two Black Sabbath signature songs that I always loved to play. It had been a little while since I'd done that one and had to, you know, a b it to. I tried to get, even though it seems pretty random, um, I tried to get a lot of the patterns pretty close to yeah. what he did up on the on the studio recording and uh, you know try and keep them as accurate as I can like even though I have a, a what's it a six piece set up there he was really just using a four piece in a lot of that so yeah. I tried to keep it to only only the front rack tom and the the first floor tom similar to what he would have done on the track as well so that one took a little while to dust it off and you know uh uh, there's a little squeaky part in the middle of it, but you know, I, I, I think I got that one pretty good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I love that you are the integrity to the song playing the drums he played because I'm the same way. When I play on my real big blue kit, which people will see in a moment if they haven't seen it before, when I play Zeppelin on that, I only play the the bass drum, the snare, the one up, yeah. two down, and the two timpani drums, which I happen to have. But I don't play <laughs> a china. I don't play a splash. I, I don't embellish whatsoever. And I've been playing that stuff since I was literally since I was seven years old. It's probably the most accurate drumming dialect i can speak if you will through the drums yeah. just because i studied his playing so much for so many years <laughs> i've been playing 54 years um <laughs> and in fact this would be a great opportunity to mention that may 20th in las vegas we're going to announce it officially soon there's going to be a live drum talk tv 10 year celebration and two guys from my old band way back when I was a teenager, before the term tribute bands, before the term cover bands, we were known as the Zeppelin band. And we played three hours. The guitar player had all the same guitars as Jimmy, played with the bow. We had our own lights. It, it was so much fun. It was one of my favorite musical experiences with a band was playing that music. And Chaz West from Bonham, Foreigner, uh, the Moby Dicks, and, and Westbound is going to join us on vocals as a guest because our old singer doesn't sing anymore. Uh, this is many, many, many years ago. And I'm the youngest one. I'm the baby, and I'm about to turn 60 as this is being recorded in April. So um, looking forward to that. And at that show, I'm looking for a graphic. We are going to make the official launch of this, which is the Drum Talk TV Brilliance membership. We're building a membership site right now that's gonna have an education arm, not just drumming, but also recording, tracking, miking drums, mastering, mixing, things like that. And we're also going to have a lot of uh, live streamed shows and clinics and round table discussions with your favorite drummers and different stuff like that. So sign up for our newsletter, folks, so you get that info, because it's going to be a special, special, special get in early as early adopter VIPs being launched in about a week and a half. Um, so I just, I had to give that a plug because it's a really big deal. I've worked hard to build this thing over yeah. 10 years. So we're going to celebrate in May. Um, so I digress. Uh, maybe I don't want to <laughs> turn it up for this next one. Cause it's me. Um, and Lou gets such a great sound. So ding dong me. I forgot to on, turn man. on my main <laughs> mic above my set for this. So the audio, when I play the hi-hat, it's very foily. And, and almost crunchy. I hate making apologies, but I don't want to hurt anyone's ears. But it's kind of low volume as well. Ah. But here we go. So one of my favorites is also one of my favorite bands that I've been playing since probably I was 14 or 13, and that's Rush. And I chose a long part, a, not a long, but about as long as yours, feature of Livy Lestrangiato. And it's always intimidating to play that because people are, you know, Neil Peart fans, of course, are almost like Green Bay fans, Raider fans, are so <laughs> fanatical. It's got to be perfect. And then I don't know if you know those folks, but Lou <laughs> plays in the longest standing Rush tribute band. So it's like, why am I doing this song again? Well, it's one of my favorite drum features. So here we go with uh, me doing a section of La Vida Strangiato. Go ahead and turn it up and feel free to rake me after this one. Here we go.
There you go. That's how you get, folks. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. <laughs> Thank you. It's so fun to play. What a re- classic. Yeah, I remember running and getting that album at lunchtime during high school in 78 when it came out and then getting home and playing it and hearing their first instrumental that's actually a nice story with so many little parts. It's based on Alex Lifeson's plague of always having nightmares. And when I heard that much of the song, it was like, oh my God, I got to learn that. And the band said, the same band I referred to earlier said, yeah, let's play that, give Nick the singer a break. So we learned that and played it. I was 15 and it was like the hardest thing I had ever learned. I had played a bunch of VLP, Yes, Genesis, but that segment right there was one of those things when I first heard it, I'll never be able to play that. And when I learned that, I never said that again about anything, you know, because that's such a limiting belief. And folks, if you watch this show, if you watch Dan's Almost Daily Vlog, I, I don't have a lot of time to practice. I don't work on my craft at all. I just, I do not sit down and do a warm up or rudiments or I just don't do that because I'm very busy and important. Well, I'm busy <laughs> and running Drum Talk TV and, and my marketing company. So when I sit down to do that stuff, I, I do it because first of all, I'm not chasing that record deal rainbow like I was 30, 40 years ago. And I know that a lot of drummers and other musicians, they're afraid to put themselves out there because they're afraid of being criticized. And and as artists, awesome, that creative mind, sometimes the emotions can be so, oh, they don't like it. Oh, they're bagging on me. Oh, I'm just going to burn my stuff or go to sell it to Salvation. You know, whatever. And I, I intentionally don't sit down before Dan's almost daily vlog when I feature something that I'm going to explain, break down or play. I don't rehearse it or practice it. Because I want to just be authentic and I want to encourage people that it's okay. Just just put stuff out. Just get used to making videos and you'll get better and better and better at it. Because sometimes someone's a great player, but then they, their brain locks up because it's on video or it's live, God forbid, yeah. right? And I want to encourage people to just get out there and just do it. Just do yeah. it. Play for yourself first. Don't worry about pleasing anybody let alone everybody. That's impossible. My wife and I have 11 kids and 19 grandkids. I'm telling you, you can't please everybody. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, expanding on that too, you know, I, I, a lot of folks know I do a lot of teaching with the School of Rock system. And that's one of the things you, like you said before, and I'll say that to all of my students is, you know, cause I'll get some kids to say, Oh, you know, is there something in, in, that you'd like to work on or something you're having trouble learning you might want to do? And I've had some students come in, they say, well, I'd really like to learn that song, but I can't play that. And it's like, well, well wait, 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 stop right there. Right. Yes. There's, 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 oh yeah. There's only, you can't play that right now yeah. or yet you know but it's just because let's like, let's take the time take this you know and, and if you commit to it if you're willing to you know give give your give yourself the chance to try it you can teach yourself how to play anything yeah. um and yeah just don't 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 get that vocabulary in your head yeah and speaking of folks sending stuff in too I, I i'm hoping with the under the influence dan and i have talked about it we'd love to be able to do a future episode where it's and the, you know, videos that you guys sent yeah. in, not just us, you know, not just me and him throwing stuff back and forth. Yeah. I'd love to do a whole whole show where we're absolutely, you know, you know, things that you guys have sent in that you, you know are your biggest influences. Yeah, and here's how you can do that: you can go to Drum Talk TV. Not now. Wait till after the show. You can go to drumtalktv.com, <laughs> and in the upper right, I think it's like that on mobile also. Definitely on on desktop, the upper right, it says video submissions, click on that. It takes you to a long thing that explains what we accept, what we don't, there you go, (laughs) how to do it. Um, uh, Some tips, some ideas for themes. And here's one, like Lou says, if things that have influenced you, then there's a form to fill out. It goes to a dedicated email. We check that and we'll, we'll feature you and put under the influence in the subject, put under the influence in the subject so that when I go through it or someone else does, they'll know it's for this show. And Lou and I would love to feature all of you, which would be great. Cool. So uh, I guess it's uh, it's your turn again. Good, not mine. I was choking up already. So here's another <laughs> one of Lou's influences. And when he mentioned he was going to do this, uh, I, I was really happy about it because it's also one of my favorite influences, the drummer, one of my favorite bands. And probably my favorite song by this band and my favorite cool. drum break 
by this drummer with this band, and Lou awesome. nails it. Yeah, so I give a sub introduction. Give us your introduction and why you decided to do it and what this drummer song break and band means to you. Also, yeah, that, definitely thank you first for the, the compliments on that. Um, but yeah, a drummer that I was always very influenced by, Mr. Carl Palmer. Um, really a big fan of ELP and, and all and any, you know, any drumming that he's done. But this is like the, that, you know, that super group uh, for, of Asia. So Wildest Dreams had that great drum break that I thought was awesome. I did try it, though. I mean, here's my disclaimer. Oh. I tried playing it in traditional grip like Carl because I'm normally a match grip player. That's right. And... Um, I had I ended up going back to a take of of, of match grip for this one okay. because moving around, wow, moving around on some of these breaks with the traditional grip, um, I got to do a little work on that. So. Yeah, I get that. That's that is difficult. I use I play around with, and I do mean play around with traditional grip. If I'm playing on my small four piece jazz kit, if I'm playing like Steely Dan, old Chicago or old school traditional jazz from anything from 1969 backwards, I will, that's when I'll use it. Oh, with the yeah. exception of if I emulate one of my favorite drummers and friends, Daniel Glass with Royal Crown Review, then I'll go to traditional just to challenge myself. Cause I didn't, I, I played that maybe the first three years of playing drums. And that was a long time ago. I've been playing 53 years, 53, 54, who's counting at this point. Uh, <laughs> and, and since then it's been match, match, match. So it's a challenge for me to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll do it once in a while. Way back when, when we did some of our other breaks, I did do the traditional grip for 50 ways to leave your lover. Um, but right. this one, I tried it a few times and I felt I could play it better with It's match a lot grip. faster <laughs> and you're moving around on more drums. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Here we go. Yay, that was great. That that was a fun one to learn too. And there's a version from of them playing live. I'm trying to remember the year. It's it's a more forward year, but it is with Steve Howe. And Carl um embellishes on it a bit. It's the same length, but there's this one part where it's just double bass, dig 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 and then one part where he just stops and then goes back. It's really cool. I don't know if you've seen that. I'm going to have to check for that one. Yeah, because yeah. I know I've seen a few versions where I was looking around before doing this um, where he would often feature his solo in that spot. Yes, too. exactly. But I haven't, I haven't caught the one that you mentioned. I'm just going to go check that one Yeah, out. it's from a DVD from uh, Stephen would know, but he's 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 at a, in a different meeting. It might be like 2012 or something. It might be the same year they opened for Yes, which would have been back then. I don't remember, but it's it's really cool. But great job on that. Great job. So now yeah. back back to my thing. Um, so this is a, this is a, I remember this one being one of those ones I heard and went, whoa, I got to learn that. You know, Terry Bozio with the band UK, speaking of John Wetton with Asia, um, UK was actually designed to be kind of what Asia became. He designed that to be like a, a commercialish super group with Alan Holdsworth, Bill Bruford, Eddie Jobson. I mean, what a lineup. But they wanted to stay a bit more artsy and fusion-y, whereas Wetton wanted to go more into what Asia became. So we started yeah. all over after the iteration that didn't have Holdsworth and Bruford and instead just had Terry Bozio. And I, I love this song. And I was explaining to Lou via uh, chat earlier today that this song 
was actually performed with Bruford and Holdsworth before they had recorded the second album when they brought in Terry. And then Terry embellished on this part that Bill originally came up with. But I got to say, I like Terry's part better as much as I love Bill. This is just fancier, I guess, or something. I don't know. So the audio... I could not find any good audio to play to that wasn't official. So I figured it would get muted. So if you all know this, you'll recognize it because it's the beginning of this song, The Only Thing She Needs from the album Danger Money. If you don't know this, here you go. It just looks like a little drum solo. And then I stop (laughs) right before it goes into the groove with the rest of the band. And I might sing along with the part where the bass and organ come in after the little drum thing that I'm emulating. So here you go. And I'll probably have to size it and jump to that part of the video uh, for technical things I couldn't sort out before we start. So we just think, where is this one? Okay. So let's pause it. And I'm going to size it real quickly. Dun, da, 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 da. And we're going to go to about <laughs> 304, which is way out here. Okay, here we go. Ready? Check this out, folks. This is a fun thing to play. If you're a drummer, learn this just for the fun of it. Oh, okay, we'll back up a touch. Oh, I think I actually stop here and do it again. Okay, here we go. You can see my frustration. I love this song, so much syncopation. And when you see me look around, here's a a little side note. I started smelling like lacquer or nail polish. And I'm thinking, is something burning behind me? Because my my little board and my PA head is behind me. Come to find out, my wife painted this little trinket with nail polish in her art studio, which is a good, it's on another level up in a good 70 feet from where I'm playing. And somehow I smelled that. I told her, I wish my hearing worked as well as my olfactory nerve. So yeah, anyhow, that was uh, the intro to Classic the only intro. thing she needs. Yeah. And and he his kit at the time, even back then, except for the bass drums, was all rototoms, except for the bass drum and the snare. So I emulated that as best I could with my Remo color tone heads. And my drums with no bottoms. My drums have had no bottoms since 1983, except for the two small ones were always no bottoms. So, yeah, I'm one of those weirdos. (laughs) Great job on those. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks. So, folks, we will be announcing when our next show is tuned, is is soon. (laughs) Lou and I are going to sort out our, well, my mouth isn't working today. Lou and I are going to sort out our schedule right after this episode, which is about to get the plug pulled on real quick. I'm going to get the hook. (laughs) But uh, I want to thank everybody for watching, whether you're watching live or on the archive. If you are watching today, February 15th, we have two more shows coming up. We have Dr. Nadia Azar at 11 a.m. Pacific with Drumming Injury Talk with Dr. Nadia, professor professor of kinesiology at the University of Windsor, Canada. And she's done a lot of drumming studies, things like that. So we're going to talk about arthritis, bursitis, tendonitis, carpal tunnel, repetitive motion injuries from drumming. So chime in on that. And then at 4 p.m. Pacific, my son Steve and I do Yes Shift, which is a proggy show based around the Yes universe. And it's a news desk report. And we simulcast that on Drum Talk TV as well. <sighs> I'm out of breath. I think I need a nap. I actually got a, I think I mentioned this before I even <laughs> smelled that lacquer, Lou. I got a headache doing my <laughs> my two pieces. <laughs> I don't, don't think I've ever gotten a headache playing drums before, but I was just <laughs> frustrated with the time crunch last minute and all this nonsense. So there you go. Any closing words from you, Lou? Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, this is always so much fun to do here with Drum Talk TV. And thank you to Dan. Uh, we're really looking forward to the upcoming episodes. we got a couple cool ideas that we're going to be bringing to you. And again, please send some in. We'd love to feature you guys. Absolutely. DrumTalkTV.com. Look for the Vito submissions link and sign up for our email list. Big, big stuff coming up that you can be a part of more of as well. Thanks, everybody.